Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the complete series of Harry Potter Collectible Minifigures Series 2. This is set number 71028. There are 16 minifigures here. There are a ton of amazing characters, a bunch that are exclusive, and later today or tomorrow you can expect a comparison video with this series and Series 1. But for now we're just going to be taking a look at each character individually, starting with number 1, ending with number 16. But first let's take a look at the checklist. All right, the checklist for uh, this series is one of the strange newer ones that gets folded up like this with a little piece of tape. Uh, it uh, has all the characters pictured on front with a little warning on the side, logo at the top. Flipping it over, it teaches you how to build James, Neville, Fred or George, and Luna, or excuse me, not Luna, Myrtle, uh, with the jumper piece there. It's got an advertisement with the three new uh, big three on the top. It's a pretty boring manual. I, I definitely like the older style much better. I'm not a fan of the size of this and how there's so many tiny little squares, but it's pretty simple and nothing new. All right, character number one is going to be Harry Potter himself. This is the uh, plain clothes variant from the Half-Blood Prince, and he does have the Half-Blood Prince's book with an excellent print on the top for the copy of advanced potion making. On the inside, uh, spoilers real quick, you can see all of Snape's notes uh, improving the textbook, and I love this print. It's absolutely fantastic and very accurate, and I'm pretty sure that says Secrum Semper at the top there. Not quite sure. Uh, might be reading too much into it, but I'm sure if I had a magnifying glass, I could read a ton of details there. Harry Potter himself has an excellent jean print. I don't know how well my camera's picking it up, but he's got black shoes and a belt. He's got this classic wand and a very nice jacket print. Closed this time, not open, much more faithful to the movie. He's got some nice detailing on the back and pulling off his hair. He's got a smiling face here and a frowning face right there, kind of worried. So it's a very good Harry Potter variant and one I'm definitely glad to add to the Hogwarts display. Minifigure number two is going to be Albus Dumbledore. This character uses two new molds, one for his phoenix fox and one for his hair. This fox is the f second time we've ever gotten a molded fox figure. The last time was in was it 2002 with the Chamber of Secrets, and we got a brick-built one in the Great Hall. This is an excellent mold. I really, really love the printing here, and the way it looks is just fantastic. I can't wait to integrate this into Dumbledore's office. Taking a look at Dumbledore himself, he's got a very nice uh, dress piece with printing on the back slope there. His hair piece is triple molded, it looks like, with three different colors, if I can pull it off. Show you how that looks in there. Although this might just be printing now that I look at it closer, but it's very good. He does have a very nice beard, pulling that off. Uh, gives you a better look at his torso print, which continues straight down onto his dress. Some very nice gold detailing. And on the back, he's got uh, some nice little fur right there. He has two faces, this kind of smiling, kindly expression and this one with an open mouth. So overall, a very good minifigure and a variant I'm definitely glad to have in this series. Hermione Granger is gonna be the next minifigure. This is a very good variant, no arm printing, but she has some very, she's got some very nice side leg printing right here and some very good lower leg printing as well. Her Butterbeer piece is brand new for this series, only appears in the set with Ron as uh, well. It's got a very nice little crystal clear Butterbeer in there. It's a very interesting cut piece and I'm definitely glad to add it to the Great Hall. Her torso print is very interesting. She's got the curves on the side and some nice stripe design. She's got the bushy hair piece. I believe this comes in the other sets with her this year too, or last year, excuse me. And you've got the continuation of the print on the back. Kind of worried expression on the back with some freckles and a smiling expression out front. And she's got the classic Hermione colored wand. Not too much else to say for this character. Ron Weasley is next up, and unfortunately, he shares the exact same accessory as Hermione. Well, it might be good to get multiple of this for your uh, Hogwarts display. It would have been nice maybe to get this cup empty or something, but it's, uh, it is what it is, I guess. He's got an excellent jean piece in gray. I can foresee that being used for tons of different people for their custom characters. He's got some excellent arm printing. I love the way this continues all around on both sides, and it matches the patterns in his shirt. Really good design by the designers right there. A zipper with some fur completes the jacket, and it's got the stripes on the back. This character, I believe, besides Ginny, is the only character to keep the same hair piece over both different Harry Potter waves. Everyone else got new hair pieces, except for, I think, just the Weasleys now, because I think Fred and George had the same hair piece from Diagon Alley last time, but it's excellent, uh, still works perfectly. And taking that off, you can see he's got a smiling face here and a very angry, upset face on the other side. Nothing much else to say, uh, just common clothes with the rest of the trio. 
Our next character is a variant of Luna Lovegood. This is the Lion Luna. I absolutely love this figure. She's going to fit in perfectly with the Quidditch set um, for cheering in the stands. Finally, someone to go in the final tower. She's got some excellent dual molded legs with some really great printing around the sides there. Some good pink jeans, a very nice shirt print, and her lion headdress is a brand new piece. And she also comes with a hair piece in case you don't like that. This is the hair piece that she came with, I think, back in 2010 uh, or 11. So maybe that statement I made about the Weasleys is not correct anymore. But, take a look at her face, you can see she's got a smiling face there, and kind of like a frowning face there. She's got some dark gray arms and a very nice sweater print, and the traditional wand for her. However, no other accessories, but a very good figure, and a very exciting variant that I'm happy to get in the series. As far as accessories go, Griphook may have one of the best in the series. This sword of Gryffindor steals the show. It is absolutely one of the best molded swords I've ever seen. I love the jeweled bits on the, uh, the little handle right here and the base down there. It, the, the they're shiny and the sword's metallic. It's such a cool color contrast. And there's some really excellent details right there. And this looks so good. And I mean, I don't know why we haven't gotten a molded sword before, but it's almost worth getting several copies of this minifigure so you can have this sword in all your different sets. But pulling that aside, Gripple comes with a key. He's got some striped arms, a brand new hair ear combo, I guess. Uh, it kind of looks like it takes inspiration from uh, the Doctor's hair piece uh, for Peter Capaldi. There's no double-sided facial print, just this kind of growling face right here, vest and short legs. Nothing too interesting besides the sword, but still a great character and one that will fit in Diagon Alley. For the first time ever in Lego form, we get both of Harry's parents. This is Lily Potter. I do appreciate her character design, although I think maybe it could have been a little better. I do love Baby Harry. Just uses the baby hair, uh, baby piece. So you can now have Baby Harry versus Baby Voldemort if you want. But putting that aside, she has some red spot for hair. There's some very nice back printing. It's got some little wrinkle lines there. Her legs do have printing. Let's see if I can get that to show up. Uh, black shoes and it looks like a little skirt piece there. A uh, nice little vest, and she's got a happy expression on the other side, and she's kind of a basic female expression on the other side. No expressions of terror as, you know, Voldemort kills her or anything, but that would be a little dark for Lego. But overall, very happy to finally get Harry's parents in Lego. Speaking of which, here's James Potter. I, one thing I do wish was different about Lily is I wish she had the hairpiece from this uh, little picture right here, but I love this, this little photograph. I love the gold border. It's excellent. And really, the shine on it, it, I couldn't imagine a better piece. The picture is, I believe, from their wedding day when they were dancing around. It's a shame it doesn't move, but it's uh, printed on one of these uh, colored pieces right here from the, like, Minecraft fences. Excellent, excellent inclusion, and you can definitely hang it up inside Harry's room in Private Drive. Taking a look at James, I'm not sold on his hair. If you look, the color contrast between the sideburns and the hair isn't great. He does have a smiling face here and an even more happy face on the other side. He's got a maroon scarf, but pulling that off, let's see if I can get that off. He's got what looks to be a very nice suit, which can be used for many different custom characters. So it's uh, very beneficial to have that here. And his hair piece is the Harry Potter hair piece used for this year, just in a reddish brown. It's a good character, although I do wish the hair on both him and his wife was a tiny bit different. Ginny Weasley is going to mark the halfway point from this series. She has a brand new piece for her hair and the martini glass to hold the chocolate. This piece also comes in the Diagon Alley set, which I should have a video talking about up very, very soon, if all things go according to plan. I love this piece, though. It's going to be very useful. Her hair piece is nice little wavy there. And it's got some details on the back and a little hair clip up there. Very glad to get this. Hopefully, we see it in more sets. This variant of Ginny actually fits in perfectly with the Astronomy Tower, with the Slug Club Party. She's got a very smiley, happy face there and kind of a little sly grin, uh, grin there. She's got some pearls on her uh, tank top, it looks like. No sleeves, uh, dual molded legs, shoes on the bottom. I wish Lego could print on the back of the leg, but hopefully we'll get there soon. And I do love her necklace and the little beads continuing there. It's a great figure, a very good variant, and definitely fits in with this year's Lego sets. Up next, we have Fred and George Weasley. The Weasley twins, I can't tell them apart. I don't know which is which. So let's take a look at them at the same time. They both have wands. Pulling those aside uh, and look at their accessories. We have a 2x2 two two tile print of the Marauder's Map. This matches up with the 2x3 tile print we got with the Halberts Students accessory set. So I'm very happy to get this here. It's a great piece and the designs do match. I'll do a comparison on that sooner rather than later, hopefully. And the other twins accessory is an amazing suitcase. When you open it up, it actually has a little tally board 
and you know the little uh, knots, uh, little knocks for how much all the ingredients cost and everything for the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes uh, back in the common room. And you actually get two of the little skiving snack boxes. One for it looks like six nuts and one for three. There are actually two extra of those in the poly in the little minifigure pack, so you can have more of these going around the common room, which I love. This print is amazing, and it's definitely one of my favorite accessories. Looking at the twins themselves, they have the exact same hat, and they have the same outfit, except this one is open. You can see the underclothes, so they're very similar. I do wish we got other characters instead, maybe Rita Skeeter and Gilderoy Lockhart, because I really want to lead our Rita Skeeter minifigure. But pulling off their identical hats, you can see there are four different facial expressions. Those two, and spinning them around, these two right here. I believe these are the same expressions that you can find in the Diagon Alley set, but it's really nice that we have four different expressions instead of just two of the same, like the uh, Parvati twins and the Evan Calendar. The only villain in this series is going to be Bellatrix Lestrange, but I absolutely love this variant. This is only the second time she's appeared in LEGO, third if you count the Burrow that came out this year. Uh, she's an excellent little Azkaban prisoner number right here. She's got some really good printing on the front and back of her dress. I wonder if they're ever going to do side dress printing. She's got some really nice arm printing right here, which can be put on serious black if you want to add extra detail. She has a black wand and dark gray handcuffs. And popping those off, if I can, I'll pull off her excellent hair piece. This is the same that she had uh, in the burrow in 2010 or 11. Uh, it's a harder plastic. It, I, it's not rubber. It, it's interesting. It's still a little give, though. It's got a little give. She got some very nice torso printing here with the stitch lining up, and that continues on the back here. She's got a very disapproving mad face here, and kind of a evil happy face there. I'm surprised that she reuses Mantis's face print in the burrow instead of you know another face like this, because Lego does tend to reuse uh, collectible minifigure faces for licensed characters. So I'm a little disappointed they didn't in this case because this is a much better facial print than what we get in the burrow. One of my personal favorites is going to have to be Kingsley Shacklebolt. His accessory is a broom in a brand new color. This also appears in Diagon Alley, but I think it's exclusive to those two sets. He has the graduate robe in the new fabric with two different colors. On this uh, one side, it's a dark blue. Here we got a light blue. His clothes are amazing. If I pull this out of the way, you can see no. Uh, he's got a little bit of leg printing there, and he's got some really nice per like lilac and dark blue highlights on his purple robes, some arm printing there. And on the back, he's got the highlights again. No back facial printing, but he's got a really nice hat with printing all around the diamonds. He's got a very stern, uh, kind of happy, dopey expression, which matches the character pretty well. And I definitely love the way this looks. They've captured him perfectly. I have no complaints. The only ghost in this series is going to be Moaning Myrtle. Her accessory is the Tom Riddle's Diary Unbroken. We got the broken one two years ago with Dobby. There's a print inside that says, My name is Harry Potter. And Tom Riddle's starting to write back, hello. This is amazing and very good for play, especially since we have the damage version. You can act out the stabbing. Moaning Myrtle comes with one of the superhero jump pieces to make her floating, but taking her off that. You can get a better look at the character herself. She's one of the only two in this series to have medium legs. They got some excellent printing right there. I love this kind of like sand blue color, and she's got a different color skin than nearly headless Nick. It's this kind of palish blue like we got for the ghoul. Her hair piece is rubber. Uh, it's pretty pretty nifty. Uh, works pretty well for her character. She's got a very upset face here and a really sad crying expression on the back with a hood piece and the rest of her tattered robes. A really good minifigure and one I'm very, very happy to add to my collection as this is the only time she's appeared in LEGO. Perhaps one of the most major teachers we've been missing in LEGO this uh, with the Harry Potter reboot is Professor Sprout. I'm very happy we finally can add her to the Lego collection here. I was disappointed she wasn't in any of the other sets. She's really an iconic character, and she's head of Ravenclaw House, uh, excuse me, Hufflepuff House, so we really should have gotten her earlier. And she's got a Mantric accessory. This is the same style as the uh, Clock Tower, excuse me, Astronomy Tower, but it's a different print. It's a little, it's just a little different, but you won't notice because for the most part, it's going to be in the pot. She's got some really nice printing here, and it continues on the back of her dress. She's got a brand new hair hat combo with earmuffs and a little witch's hat bent forward, which is strange because typically Lego has you apply hats so they're curving away from the character. So it's pretty interesting to see that here. She's got a very happy motherly expression on this side and a worried, nervous expression here, perhaps when Noah knocks himself out. But it's a great minifigure with some excellent printing, and it's about time we got her in Lego form.
And last but not least, we have a character who has an excellent accessory and a terrible torso print. Now, this is perhaps my second favorite accessory tied with the Sword of Gryffindor. We got the Monster Book of Monsters, the bookmarks there with the little um, page line print with the teeth right, uh, teeth right there, excuse me. A brand new mold for the top of the book with the fangs going down and all the eyes here. This is like exactly what it looks like in the movie. So much better than the last Monster Book of Monsters we got all those years ago. And I really have, I'm so happy to get this. The only problem I have with it is Neville, his shirt and legs almost identical to Hermione's from uh, two years ago. It's just like, closed a little more, and he's got the same hairpiece as uh, he's been using in the clock tower, in the, excuse me, astronomy tower, keep on the clock tower. Word expression here, and even more word expression over here. I'll When I do my comparison between the two series, I'll show in more uh, detail how close these are, but I would have preferred maybe uh, with the ruffled up broken robes from being, you know, attacked by the book in the scene, but... I understand that this is usable for custom characters, but it's still so close to the Gryffindor Rose we got before, and it's a little disappointing. All right, real quick, before I go on to my final verdict, I want to go through and give a quick feel guide for all the characters. So I figure we can start with the easiest character to feel. That's going to be Kingsley Shacklebolt. This character actually comes in an individual little plastic bag because he's a cape. So when you're feeling, all you have to feel for is the crinkle of a package inside the actual minifigure packet, and you've got him. If you're still not sure, you can feel for the broomstick, but he's remarkably easy to feel. The next three easiest characters are going to be Dumbledore, Sprout, and Bellatrix. These characters all have dress pieces, so when you're feeling, this is a really big bulky piece. You can feel the slope really easily, and so you know it's going to be one of these three. For Dumbledore, easy enough to feel the phoenix. It's a really large piece. You could also look for his hat, but don't get it confused with Professor Sprout. For her, I felt out the little cauldron and then the flower piece. There are two of these in her bag, just remember that. And for Bellatrix, I found her hair piece, which is wild. If you need another confirmation, you can find the handcuffs. But those are really easy because of their dress pieces. Uh, another character that's really easy to feel because of legs is going to be Griphook. He is the only character in this series with the uh, short legs, so it's really easy. Uh, the legs will not bend, and if you don't uh, know for sure, you can find the key piece. Just remember that the key piece comes connected to two like that, so it'll be a very strange uh, piece. You might not recognize it. And the Sword of Gryffindor is another dead giveaway. If you can feel that, just don't bend it too much. You might snap it. Two more characters you can feel based on their legs. It's going to be Moaning Myrtle and Neville. These are the only two characters with medium legs. Um, once you find the medium legs, look for the books. Uh, if you can, feel out the cheese slope here, the double cheese slope, excuse me, and the Monster Book of Monsters cover. And for Moaning Myrtle, her hairpiece is rubber, so if the hairpiece that you can squeeze and it kind of bends, it's definitely going to be her. You can also find her book, although don't mistake it for Harry Potter. He's the other character with a book in the series. For him, you really just have to be careful. Find the book, find the hairpiece. And don't mistake him for his father. Make sure you find both this, uh, both pieces of the book. So that's how you find him and Myrtle and Neville. Speaking of books, a piece that's similar to the cover of the book is going to be Fred and George's uh, briefcase right here. So what you want to do for the twins is feel first for the pom-pom and then feel for this tile print right here. This is the only two by two piece in the entire series. So if you find this, you know you got one of the twins. And if you find the suitcase or four of the really tiny tiles right here, the one by ones, you know you got the other twin. Next up, two characters with identical accessories are gonna be Ron and Hermione. They are the only ones with the cup piece that's like this. So when you're feeling around, they don't have any specialized pieces except the cup and their hairs. So what I did is I found the cup and then I felt for Hermione's hair, and I felt for something that did not feel like Hermione's hair. So for Ron, it was really easy. He didn't have a poofy hair, so I knew it was him. She did, so I knew it was Hermione. Next up is going to be Luna Lovegood. She's uh, pretty easy to feel because this line piece is massive. You just have to tap the bag, and if you can feel this, you're good. Another way to be tell for sure is she has two hair pieces. So if you feel two hair pieces in the bag, there's no one it could be but her. And uh, last but not least, we got three more characters here, Harry's parents and Ginny Weasley. So these two you got to be careful with because their hair pieces are very, very similar. Uh, feel for the large hair piece and look for the martini glass and the chocolate uh, ice cream piece right here. For this, I felt for baby Harry. And then for James Potter, I found his 2 by 3 tile print and then confirmed it by finding his scarf piece. Don't get him confused with Harry though because they do have the same hair. So that's all the characters in the series for a feel guide for them. I hope you guys have a very easy time feeling out which characters you want, if you want them all or if you want duplicates. I hope you guys have the best of luck. And now let's move on to my final verdict.
Now that we've taken a look at every character in this series, I can safely say that this is probably one of the best licensed minifigure series I've ever seen. I mean, it definitely, in my opinion, is better than DC and Lego Movie and everything. I'm not quite sure how it matches up to Harry Potter series one yet. Originally, I thought it was worse, then I thought it was better, but I think I'm going to let the, review, uh, the comparison I do later be the final judge of that, so stay tuned. Overall, though, for $5, I'm not too disappointed. I know that price is pretty high, but all these characters seem worth it to me. We get standouts like Sprout, Kingsley, Myrtle, Grip Hook, and we get characters like Fred and George, Bellatrix, then we get excellent variants with amazing printing for Harry, Ron, and Hermione. And overall, I'd recommend every single one of these characters to you guys, especially if you get the sets they go with, like Quidditch, the Quidditch set for Luna, uh, the clock, uh, the Astronomy Tower, excuse me, for her, uh, for Ginny, I can't speak right now. <laughs> If you have the Hogwarts and you want to do the display with friend George, if you get um, a bunch of Bellatrixes, you can make Azkaban uniforms. If you get the greenhouse, you can put Sprout in it. And really, all these characters fit in anywhere in your Hogwarts display. And overall, I think the designers did an excellent job. There's a couple of characters I would have loved to see, like maybe Lockhart and maybe two other characters instead of friend George, because they're very similar. But really, I don't see how I could have done a better job. And overall, guys, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and have a fantastic day.